you? What, what, so, what is this place? I'm at Dick Brothers Harvesting, Timber Harvesting. So they have harvesters and forwarders, and this is their workshop here. And um, it's not a good sign if we've got machines in here because they're not outside cutting wood. But behind me, we've got a Ponzi forwarder. And you can see the uh, bits and pieces that have come off it there that's uh, being worked on because we've got some cracks on the boom and, and things like that. And then in the uh, beyond that, the orange orange machine that you can see is a skyline. So that's for doing cable craning on very steep slopes. Wonderful. Um, so Dick Brothers, that's part of the BSW group. Yes. So Dick Brothers is a wholly owned subsidiary of a BSW Timber. Uh, which um, as well as being a timber buying director for Till Hill, I'm also involved with their business and, and how they're integrated within within the business. Fantastic. Can you tell us a little bit more about the work that's going on at the moment? Is it a busy time? Yes, it is. Well, Dick, Dick Brothers is the largest um, timber harvesting business in the country. They've got 30 harvesters and 30 forwarders and two skyline teams that really work solely across Scotland, occasionally in North England, but they've got activity all the way up the east and west coast of Scotland. They're a contractor for many different businesses, Till Hill being one of them, but they don't exclusively work for Till Hill. They work for many other businesses. And at the moment, as they have been for a long time, they're, they're very, very busy. Amazing. Thank you. How has contracting changed in the last few years? So um, I'm long enough in the tooth to remember when uh, all the trees were all cut down with men with with chainsaws and we had uh, old tractors with winches on on the back. And so I'm perhaps going back to the uh, late 80s. But since then, early on, we saw the advent of forwarders, uh, which were they, they were essentially machines that pick and carry the timber and put it to roadside. And then later on in my career through the 90s, we saw really the mechanisation of the cutting the trees down, which is, is harvesters. And harvesters have really transformed what, what we do in the forest. The harvester is probably cutting 10, 20 times the amount a man can cut, perhaps even more than that these days. And they've got very, very sophisticated, these machines. They're little factories in themselves. Uh, the, these days with many, many different computer systems that can tell you what they've cut that day, uh, how much fuel they're using. We can track them, we can monitor them from the office. Indeed, we can change the cutting pattern, the instructions that, that we have from the office. So there's been an absolute revolution in, in what we do. But at the same time, we've got much more aware of the environment in which we operate. And, and we've talked previously about how we try and manage diffuse pollution on sites or minimise that side of things. So that's harvesters and forwarders, if we use them effectively, are, are very, very good at that. And the other really important thing is the safety side of things. If you've got someone inside a cab in a harvester or a forwarder, they're protected environments, whereas men felling trees with chainsaws, un unfortunately, are, are people that are much more likely to get injured. So we've We've moved away from those large squads of men that we would have had, as I say, when I first cut my teeth in forestry and, and we've got far, far less people on the site, but in much more safer environment. And the contractors that um, Teal Hill uses, they're all local, aren't they? A lot of the time they're local to that area, so they're providing yes, they local they, jobs for the forests. Yeah, they, that's, absolutely. They tend to be. I mean, on, on occasions people are, are staying away, but it's something we we try and minimise. But some of these larger forest complex, they can be, it can be five, 10 miles into them at times. And so we will get people staying on, on site uh, in, in caravans, but, uh, or, um, and we've got other uh, welfare facilities that we have on sites the, these days, but largely they, uh, that we try and, try and keep them local wherever ever possible. And Teal Hill runs its own training programme within. When you take on a contractor, um, they have to, Pass certain. Yes, yeah, so every year we 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 look for uh, we, we look for evidence from the contractors to uh, satisfy ourselves and the wider sector that they are uh, they they are acting in a compliant, safe, and environmentally friendly manner. 
It's interesting. I was reviewing only earlier in the week with uh, with some colleagues from another business. So some of the uh, the work that we're doing around uh, compliance, and they were really quite surprised at the amount of record keeping that we're we're doing these these days uh, in the electronic format. So it's available to the the full team. We're we're taking photographs of of sites and indeed video footage increasingly, to, so that we can. Uh, evidence and demonstrate that we've got good good practice going on, on on sites. And this must have been the reason why we won the 2021 Rosper Awards. Safety yes, Awards. yes, yes, yes. Part of it. It's certainly something as a business that we take very seriously. We, we invest a lot of a lot of time and, and resource within that. And we've got a very large compliance team who work on all, all these areas. So yes, it's absolutely first uh, first rate of importance within the business. Fantastic.